Okay, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizer to invite me to give a talk here. Today I'm going to talk about this uh, microgrid energy dispatching uh, with renewable generation of electric uh, and electric vehicles via stochastic optimization learning. Uh, this is joint work with my uh, colleague from the energy engineering department, Zhu Binghe and uh, Wei Feng Yan, and uh, a math professor from Jilin University. Uh, let me first introduce the background of this research. Nowadays, we are uh, in witness this. We have witnessed this climate change. We have used too much. Uh, fossil fuels to generate electricity or similar things. Nowadays, people try to, I mean, shift from this fossil fuel energies to clean energies like uh, solar energy or wind, wind energies. And uh, for a small town or an, an, an industrial zone or something like that, the small parts, we, we, we can deploy this uh, local uh, renewable energies like uh, solar panels and uh, wind turbines. And, uh, but this, uh, here we will meet big data because we have, we have a lot of sensors and control monitors to give us a lot of data there. And uh, how to um, manipulate this, uh, how to monitor this data and then like to, to minimize the cost and uh, uh, use more clean energies. This is our target to this. And let's further simplify that uh, uh, practical scenarios to this uh, abstract scenarios. That in this uh, figure, we see that uh, we have uh, a lot of factories here. They will use electricity. And then we have a utility grid. And we have our uh, batteries to save energy and our uh, uh, electric vehicles like, like, like folk, forklifts. And uh, let's, uh, th this data will be collected by this uh, central system, and then we will dispatch uh, which uh, part will, for example, this storage system will be charged or discharged, and this electric vehicle will be, st will be stopped, and then to charge or to be used as transportation. Or, for example, if, if, if a lot of, if, if the energy is, is, is in, in need, then we can even draw electricity from the utility grid. Um, but if there are more energies generated by this wind turbine and uh, our solar power, then we can also sell these energies to the utility grid. So this is, uh, we will try to save energies from wind and solar generations and then use it for internal use. But uh, if there are more, then we can sell it. But if, if it is less, then we can draw some electricity. For example, for no wind days or rainy days, then there's actually this two basically, they won't work. Then we will draw electricity from the utility, utility grid. And uh, here's some uh, unique features of renewable energies. For example, we know that it is totally uncontrolled. It's, for example, it's rainy day today, then Basically, solar panels won't work, and uh, not too much wind, so wind turbines won't collect too much uh, energies. And uh, more importantly, there will be energy surplus in peak generation hours. For example, in night, there, if there are more wind and then, but no consumers there, then there will be a lot of uh, energy surplus. But uh, during daytime, there will be even uh, energy shortages. So uh, it's of great importance if, if we can consider such kind of microgrid deployment with energy storage system. This storage system could be a lot of things. But for our study, we restrict, we, uh, restrict our uh, scenarios to uh, electric vehicles. And uh, we will try to. Uh, device and optimal policies to distributedly uh, implement it via the batteries of EV, that's electric vehicles, with batteries in these industrial zones. Uh, in the past, uh, there's uh, some existing studies in, along this line. For example, Chao Chi and Chen, they propose deterministic approach for shuttling 
and uh, they use historical generation and consumption records data and use it to predict future energy consumptions. But it, it is well known that there will be, because this weather is so hard to predict, so there will be severe mismatch between deterministic prediction and uh, the actual situations. Uh, in a survey paper by Gu and his uh, co-authors, they initi initiate some uh, random approaches to consider this microgrid uh, shuttling problem, but uh, it, they, they initiated ideas but didn't do any uh, concrete policies. And uh, he, he, he particularly mentioned that this is, would be very efficient for industrial zones with plug-in electric vehicles with battery as distributed energy storage. So our work is to really implement such a microgrid such, uh, we can, which can serve a small scale industrial zones with totally unknown statistics of l load and generation or storage. And before that, let's recall some well-known facts that we can, we can uh, predict our uh, renewable energies by its uh, predicted part and the random part. And uh, to, comp to compensate the shortage of renewable energy, this microgrid can draw powers from the utility grid, or, but with a time-varying price, because for peak hour, then the price could be higher than the shortage hour. Now, this, we have several or a couple of uh, spare batteries. This is huge batteries for electric forklifts. So it can be charged to save energy or discharged to output energies for, for the uh, factories. So our contribution is that like this. So we, we propose some, uh, we, we actually uh, realize uh, optimal shuttling designs with stochastic energy generation, sh uh, storage and consumption. We formulate this problem by an infinite horizon mark of this decision process involving solar and wind generation. And we propose an on online learning algorithm which converts to the optimal shuttling algorithm. And uh, we also use a parallel learning architecture to accelerate the convergence rate because the, older, the, the, the previous one is MP hard problem. Then we, 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 we decompose it and uh, try to solve it in a polynomial time. Now here, let's make some model assumptions. Uh, the time is divided into a sequence of shuttling slot, time slots. For example, if you let one hour, then you will change a policy per hour. Here, for example, if let, let this TS to be a half, that means every 30 minutes you will change your policies. And this system transition will be happens in the very beginning of each time slot. This is a, only a mathematical assumption. You can do it with a time buffer. And uh, at the beginning of each time slot, time slot, this controller of this microgrid will collect all the information and, and then make a a shuttling decision. And this is the first uh, model for this uh, wind power. We, we assume that the wind power can be decomposed in two parts. This is GWF, this is the predicted part. GW, W means wind. E, that's the error part. That is the random part. So for example, we have, we divide it into several states like uh, windy, and uh, no wind or something or in between. Then you have several states of wind energy. And for solar, similarly, you, you have a predicted part and plus this uh, uh, random part. And uh, it has like sunny, cloudy, or even rainy. This is, uh, we have N2 states of this solar generations. And we have this, uh, Transition kernels, this is just a matrix. And uh, for instantaneous load, uh, electricity load, then we, we, we assume that, for example, if, if several, if two, con if two factories are, are working, then, then we need, uh, sorry. 
couple of times of some state of uh, ampere hours of uh, energies like that. And this is a transition between two uh, states from two consecutive uh, time slots. Uh, basically, we, we assume that there are several forklifts or simply electric vehicles which carries batteries. Of course, we assume that the, the number of batteries are more than the number of forklifts because some batteries will be stored there and for charging and then the others will be used for forklift. And uh, this forklift will be, have two states, that is active and, uh, and inactive. At the, at the beginning of each time slot, uh, an active forklift will become inactive with certain probability, P in, that is deactivated. An inactivated forklift will become activated with certain probability, P A C. Uh, we assume that uh, this active forklift battery energy could last for one time slot. That means it won't stop there due to the lack of energies. This occurrence will be referred to as battery outreach. This is not alone because you have, if it stopped there with, with no energy, with no battery electricity, then it's, you have to send an, another car to pull it back to the right position for recharging it. This battery, for this battery part, so, so we, we number all these batteries, index it with one, two, N. MB, and the spare batteries will be connected to the microgrids, which can be charging, draw electricity from the wind power or the solar power or discharging, sir, outputs electricity for these factories. When one focus become inactive, that means it, its lack of the electricity, its, its battery will be installed with the spare battery with the highest level of energy. So. If there are two full, like two fully charged batteries, then you just pick the one with the highest, with the minimum numbers. If, if two are the same, fully charged, then you just pick the, the one with less uh, in the indices. Uh, the battery will be denoted by EB, so it, it, it's, it's full battery capacity, and its charging power is NC, eta C, and its discharging power is eta D. This beta, that means this charging would be draw more energy than its discharging power. That's why later we'll see that some batteries will be charging, but while at the same time serving this uh, microgrid. Now we will use this state of charge to measure the remaining level of uh, energy, any energy level of the battery. So we will see that this SOCR means that uh, it has uh, certain energy levels. For example, NE means that it's fully charged. Zero means it's, it's empty. This, uh, in between, it has certain levels of uh, energy level. Uh, we further let this IRB means this, whether this I's battery is used by a folk in the TIS load. The status of this batteries will be denoted by SB. That means it has an energy level and uh, this one is used or inactive or not used. It's char it's, this, this battery is used or active or inactive. And uh, the two more uh, indicators, IC and ID means it is charging or it is discharging. And uh, R for RT means that the priority index of these batteries. Now we have the stochastic battery model. That if this battery at this ta T's time slot it's, it's, it's zero at this time, so we can update our this battery state to the next state to T plus one. So it's 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 defined like this. The previous energy level is kept, and if it's charging, then this energy level will increase. If it's discharging, this energy level will minimize. If it is full charged, then this number cannot be increased. So this is the full, full energy level. Uh, we have some certain kind of probabilities to activate this. So we, this one will be used. That means we have probability PAC 
to activate this battery. And uh, a certain amount of probability, one minus the remaining probability to keep it inactivate. And if this battery is in use, that means this is activate, active. I mean, then we will let this, then at next time, then it will be discharging and its energy level will decrease by one. That is, SOCR it will decreases by one, but it's still bigger than zero, otherwise it will be out outage happens there. So this, but this, for the, for the next state, for the next time slots, it has certain probability to be deactivated or the remaining problem to keeping activated. Now, overall, let's see, we, have, we can characterize our system of microgrids in this, at, at this T's time slots as a system like ST, this is a state of the system. It has the two part, this is the general state, SG, and uh, the battery state for each battery. So this gen general state means the wind power and solar power. The battery state means it's for each battery, it, it has a, a energy level and it's whether it's charging or discharging, in use or deactivated. So this is a, basically this is a, a number to the power of another number, so to the power of another number. So this, this number increases dramatically. If we run this full, um, full grid, mi microgrid policy, then we have a very big matrix. This matrix from previous states to next states, we, are, we have to consider the state of this uh, wind solar load and each battery state. And this is, as I said, this is an exponential increase in this complexity. And uh, let's see, this, what, what we try to minimize is that we try to minimize the, the cost of this microgrid. That means at, at time t, at t's time slot, the time varying price, this is the price of uh, electricity from the utility grid times this time slot half an hour times the load here. This is using this is the load usage of the electricity and the charging part. And but there are some negative terms. That means you will benefit. You will gain something. That discharging that you you can use the electricity gain uh, saved in your battery, and you can use the energy generated by this wind turbine and solar panel. So actually this number could be a negative thing. If that is true, then that means you can sell the energy to the utility grid. And uh, in the long run, let's let, let this time t goes on and on, then we have more and more knowledge of this, uh, the historical data. Then we can average this, uh, this time this average cost of per slot, time slot. And, uh, but we have some constraint. That means we, we, we require that there's no outage happens in our system, or we avoid it as much as, much as possible. That this, out, this battery outage should happen as less as possible. This is a constraint minimization problem. That's our problem. So, as uh, we are mathematicians, so we do it in a different way. We, we use, uh, we introduce a multiplier lambda here, then term transform that constraint minimization problem to this unconstrained problems. Of course, this lambda is a, is a key part to balance these two. Uh, here we will use, we'll propose the first algorithm to study the full approximation, full multi, uh, full multi grid, uh, full microgrid policy, uh, shuttling policy problem. That is, we give this original state T at this, at this stage, the, the random wind, solar energy, and the instantaneous load. And we have a learning rate, this gamma T, you can set it for, for us, we do it as 0.1 or 0.2, and if some tolerance, that means if the cost value will not decrease, then we will see this is 
this algorithm will converge. And we let this initial data to be, I mean, this initially all the trans transition kernel will be uh, evenly distributed because we later we'll learn and update it. And if at the next stage we have a correct uh, prediction, then we will we will enhance. I mean, this this storage will be enhanced, and we keep we we add this we uh, add this weight. I mean, increases this weight. And uh, if it is wrong, then we leave it as usual. And this parameters activated parameter and deactivated parameters will be updated in this way. And uh, later we calculate we calculate this uh, this cost value among and choosing a, the best one, the best policy from our admissible policies to minimize this problem. And then if this cost value doesn't change too much, then we say it's stable, then this optimal policy will be, uh, will be recorded. recorded. And, but if, if it, is it is large enough, then we will run it again and again, and then until it is converged to a stable sh uh, shuttling policy. But the original problem, as, as I told you, that it's exponential uh, increase. So we have to, I mean, break down this the curse of dimensionality. Let's we, we introduce this linear approximation for this value function. We don't uh, mix take all the batteries as a whole. I mean, let's see a per battery value function. That means we decompose this whole system of view this batteries as a whole to decompose this as a system, transitional system of for each batteries. And here you see that this is a battery to general states mapping. And uh, this essentially we linearize this long linear uh, cost functional to this linear cases. And uh, replace this, the original value functions by its linear approximation we have we for example this is like a Taylor expansion we 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 take this first order truncation and then leave the others and here you see that the uh, for each for the for each state us we we have we just minimize among each battery this is the the, this here, this is v, vi function. This we minimize this, we transform this v functions by this linear approximation that we, we consider only each si. This is battery for each si. This here, r r. This is for the i's case. And uh, for this linear approximation, we can we can adapt our previous algorithms to to this new version. That is, we we do it per bat, per battery. We update these parameters for each, but among these uh, candidates' policies, we only minimize its its linear approximation. This is a v v r cost function, and then the total one will be approximated by its the sum of each per battery cost function, and then we evaluate this. Cost functional. If it is converges, then we op obtain this optimal shuttling policy. If it is not, then we run it again and then again. And let's see some numerics. Here we assume that this wind power has two kind of uh, three states. That is, full wind, half wind, or no wind. And this energy of the solar wind, a uh, solar system, it's uh, it has a sunny cloud cloudy or just no no sound it's just rainy or something and uh, the instantaneous load has two factories to 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 four that is 40 and 20 kilowatt this is this data is from from a real industrial microgrid and uh, this discharging discharging power and the discharging power are, are just this this is the two times of this discharging power and the state of uh, charge has five levels of energy like this fully charged for, uh, 75 for 50 25 at zero 
And uh, you see this, this is the data collected one for one day, for one typical day. This red curve is the predicted one, and the red curve is the random one. If, if you multiply this each other, it got this, this is a actual one. And this is for the solar wind. And, uh, and this is the instantan the real time loaded. And we calculate this for, for this uh, specific scenario. People would say that this is a simple case, but uh, if you take this, for example, this is three state of solar, three state of wind, and that's six to the power of four, then this is a mild number. If, if you think this is a fine number, but if you increase it, this power of something will be a disaster for uh, online uh, shuttling. But for our cases, we can we, we have to we have tested for different parameters of remember this PAC, PNC, and something like, like that. They will converge to the same thing with uh, 80 or nine between 80 and 90 uh, iterations because this this we have run it several many many times and take the average, and uh, it can be done within several minutes, and uh, for Specifically, we list this uh, the first and the second ba batteries uh, optimal policies. You see that most of the time it's, it, it's, it, it's either used for transportation or for discharging. Uh, that means out, output energies for these factories. And some sometimes it's, it's it, only part of it is charging, and uh, sometimes it's, it's also charging and discharging. Because this charging power is la ma is larger than this discharging power, it, well, some some part will be used and some part will be saved, like like we use our mi microphone you, with it plugged to the power. And uh, here this is the optimal policy for data in in, in this one day, and uh, this is a detailed uh, uh, shuttling policy to assign battery one, for example, in at nine. Here, this this day zero zero means that it is uh, from from nine yes from nine to ten to eleven. You see, some will be discharging. It, it, it both two will be activated and used till for for the rest of the time because it, this energy will be saved there. This is a detailed shuttling algorithm, and uh, let's come to our conclusion. We have formulated our uh, microgrid energy dissipation problem as a stochastic optimization framework. And uh, we, you, we f formulated it as a Markov, chain, Markov decision process, MDP. And we propose an online learning-based controlling uh, control policy with increasing knowledge. Actually, we have keep record of the previous one and this memory will be recorded in the transition kernel within our matrix. And uh, to accelerate this uh, method, we have uh, decomposed this cost functional into its linear part and use linear approximation approaches to decompose this uh, function, a cost function into the summation of per battery uh, value functions. And then we can, in, in such a case, we can reduce this dimension from order of exponential to the order of um, polynomials. And here's the reference of this work. And thank you for, for your attention. Yeah, this is a hard question. Yeah, uh, we we observe indeed we observe convergence, but uh, we 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 cannot prove that it's really the the really the, the minimum one. You see some convergence, but you you are not guaranteed. This is the minimum one. Yeah, 
I'm not sure whether there, there will be local minimums or that like that. But the algorithm really works. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. We can we can discuss it later. Huh? Thank you.